the Porsche Studio sale is going to be around the end of this month or maybe the middle of the month. I will post a video announcing the sale. I will post a video three days before the sale is up. Um, I will you know, mention when the sale will be up. Please don't buy Porsche Studio until then because I don't want you paying almost double for it since the sale always goes hand in hand with a massive update which means a massive um, price spike especially for those who already can't um, work with the price that we already have it's going to be much higher um, so I'm, I'm going to try not to make it too much higher but it is it is expanding and it's an engine that's expanding so I want to be as crystal clear as possible and as transparent as possible I only have two big sales like this a year um, the next one is going to be in the fall I wanted to push it to spring but so many people want this copy soon that I, I feel like everyone's just waiting for the sale anyway the sale will be sometime in the middle of this month or the end of this month, depending on whether or not we're going to introduce the hand model before or after the update. Um, either way, there's going to be a hand model, but um, yeah. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about characterization. Um, so I have a little bit of everything here. Not so much the bell one, that's just a, kind of like a feature problem. Uh, but this over here, so we're starting straight off. Um, for this piece, what you're working from is a very difficult light environment. You're in a silhouette, but it's not complete, meaning you don't actually have light lights and dark darks that you would have in a silhouette. So this would be kind of more towards what you need to have. Just right off the bat, you needed more of this. Um, this completed it. Then something else it would be the... Um, like you went for a glowy thing and then you went for another glowy thing that was right under the first glowy thing. I would recommend you get rid of the second, sorry, glowy thing. Because what it's doing is it's undermining the role this glowy thing is doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what to call it other than glowy thing. Um, then there's a cube. There's the cube of the head that, you know, is nice and dark and no objects, um, like all objects turn away and no light can reach. So right around here, and this cast shadow kind of leans over onto the hair. So only like the top of this little bit of hair gets light. It's really, really beautiful. So I'm trying to show the cube and how the cube, like the side that is facing this, the secondary light, or this primary in this case, secondary actually, can only access like the, the cube, the front facing part of everything. It's not that strong. All right, so only some pieces get just like a little bit of light. <laughs> Use of multiple glowy things leads them to undermining each other. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be writing that in my book. All right, so you see how these little pieces of hair leave the shadow, the cast shadow of the head off the first glowy thing and kind of just catch some light. Then you have the eyes, this glowy things. And you just love to make things glow, but what you're doing in this is that you're undermining the silhouette you chose in the first place. So what you gotta do is make a final decision. What's your decision? Okay, so let's get up and, and just kind of settle down this, uh, this cast shadow of, of the silhouette before we kind of jump in and try to make other things happen. What's the point of giving her a glowy thing if she's in a silhouette because you need to be working off the silhouette but let's just keep the glowy thing in, intact let's give it its necessary amount of contrast you've been too shy you're too shy you're trying like full-on extrovert extrovert lighting scenarios but you're too shy to pull them off you have a glowy thing a glowy thing glows like that let's say there was a second glowy thing all right, so I would put a second glowy thing right here, probably kind of like um, peeking through her shirt or something like that, just like this. Okay, so it's just like a little glowy thingamabob, just peeking. Okay. Maybe this glowy thingamabob is really, really bright, <laughs> glowy thing in the bottom. Um, and uh, 
is casting light back upward. Maybe it's a little low, maybe I made it too low, it's okay. And is illuminating all the stuff that we lost. So imagine you're like a photographer and you're trying to figure out all of this as a studio scene. How would you figure that out? But you, the way you drew is you just, you just willy nilly decided to commit to a silhouette, but you weren't, one, you didn't have the balls for it. You, you really didn't have, you're, you're too, you're too, your contrast was too low. Your experience was too low with this kind of light environment. So you just kind of, you know, strolled into level 50 and you're just like, you just spawned. Okay, it's not, it's not like that. I mean, you just, you just started the game, basically, is what I'm saying. Don't do this. So I'm just getting my soft brush. I'm trying to just make it work. Kind of like the bottom here. So you're in between two now. You're in between one really strong light source from behind, one really strong light source from above that really should be casting like these kinds of shadows, you know. It really should be casting like that skeleton type shadow. Darken, get that black, and just cast the shadows, cast some longer shadows. It's not directly above, but it, it is going to create the direction of rays that are moving in this direction. Okay. And it goes on top of the mouth. Okay, and then we have some edges to all this. It's not direct light, so we still have to clean up and, and make sure these edges are fuzzy enough. And we've got that bounce light here that will turn off just for a second. If you want her eyes to glow in like that feral way, um, you can. But they cannot glow as a light source. They can glow back, you know, the way a cat eye does. It kind of just has like a bit of a gradient when it does that. just like so. You can go ahead and try something like that. Um, the forehead space looks extremely, um, just extremely large. So you're going for a horned creature in the night with no shoulders. I mean, you're really aiming for a dark theme here. It's a dark theme. Someone just caught this smiling demon girl in the forest. Complete it. Complete the theme. This isn't just a 14-day challenge you turned into a Masterpiece. Oh, wait, it might be. <laughs> okay, so just stop it. Don't trick yourself into thinking you can do an illustration with just the starting point of a 14-day challenge or just a portrait you decided to make an illustration. I know you want to illustrate. I know that's why you're here. But at least, at least think like an illustrator. At least plan a little bit. Decide early on that you're going to have this kind of light environment. Okay, so duplicate, merge down. The light weakens the further you get. And then only the tip of the nose really gets all that light. Okay, maybe if we cheat a little bit, and this is how you cheat, put some light under. And just like that. I'm just going to cut it off. Put some light under the eyelids. And then I'll cut it off. I should probably extend the shadow of the cast shadow even lower because now it's looking like um, dark circles. Oops. So I should just <clears throat> kind of just stretch it down a little further, maybe give it more of a pronounced droop like that. Okay, 
And then after everything, then I can start kind of deciding where I'm going to get the hottest kind of amount of light coming through the glow or the bloom behind her. There's going to be a shit. There's going to be a bit of a bit of bloom. It's going to say gloom, but that still applies. Okay, there's going to be a bit of subsurface scattering in her hair, which is basically anywhere where there is a shadow. Instead of a shadow, there is like a kind of belt of light that I can't seem to be figuring out right now. Actually, let me get the shoulders down first. I'm getting too excited over here. Wait, so this really doesn't make sense anymore now that you had a cast shadow. Like now that you had that setup, and and this doesn't make sense either. I mean, we can get rid of this. This just could be some bounce light coming off of something. It doesn't have to be anything at all. There doesn't have to be any light here at all. It can be just one big gradient of like light ray coming from the bottom. You know, wherever she's floating in, whatever she just manifested in, or whatever spell she just used, it could just be all this. It could just be something simple like that to complete the environment around her. Um, then there's the fact that she needs to be much darker. Her horns need to be much darker compared to the background. And then you'll be done. But you have a lot of conditions you had to apply that you were not prepared for because this was probably a face you tried to make into a, a full painting. So first of all, let me just... Um, I'll take questions in a second, all right? So I'm extending the shoulders out. I'm so sorry if I stutter or if I get kind of lost in my words. The medication I'm taking is a very tricky, tricky thing. Alright, and then just raising this hair up so we can have a more complete shoulder shape, which is actually going to make her look even more demonic. If you want her to look pleasant, if you want her to look like a sweet kind of, I don't know, kind of like a Dante's Inferno, Beatrice, beautiful, but also caught in hell, you can give her some innocent upper, you know, raised upper eyebrows, just inner eyebrows raised upward. Um, that'll kind of make her look a little less intimidating and more like, I mean, she's still freaky, but <laughs> she's still, now she's more of a, a nice freaky. Okay, some pure hot whites should never hurt if the light source is directly behind. And then there's that bloom I was talking about that needs to go into the background. So the background needs to be more more light and the object needs to be silhouetted. Okay, so that bloom is really, really important not to ignore. Because it completes the silhouette. Light doesn't just it doesn't just just sit there. It, it glows. Why am I so passionate about light? <laughs> Why, in my opinion, does light have such an attitude problem? I don't, I don't just sit there. I bounce. What are you talking about? I'm light. So see that? See the massive difference. So let's take a look at the before and after. So this kind of stuff is just, you know, extensive. Um, it, it's not, you weren't coming from this kind of region. This is a, now it's a room. Now it's a complete light environment. Now you have lights clashing. And if you had to, I mean, yeah, she's got a glowy thing on her head. What if you did get writing where the glowy thing on her head was there? Um, but you just can't have a hundred glowy things. I mean, you had her in a silhouette. There was light behind her. She was getting the rim light. What, how, okay. How does it get this sharp and this bright if it's not bright enough to be this sharp? It, bright means sharp. Write that back to me. Right? So if you have sharp, but you don't have enough bright, that's how you know as the critiquer, hey, you got sharp in here. That means that's only possible if there's enough bright to prove that exists. All right, and the shadows on the face. I'm not trying to make her look freaky. This is just the light you chose. Go to Portrait Studio. That's what you're going to see when you put the light above the head.
Um, why do you duplicate and merge down? It just depends on the edit I'm doing. Um, I think she seems to have lack of arms. Where at the shoulder line? Yep, I addressed that. I think you should call it an orb instead of a glowy thing. <laughs> I look forward to seeing glowy thing in Tom's updated word cloud. <laughs> Drink every time it's a Rex says glowy thing. <laughs> You're gonna get in trouble, Jen. Um, uh, so let's see what the other questions... I do sound exhausted. I'm so sorry. I don't look at every 14-day challenge that has been completed, Teresa. I, I there's no there's no assurance or um, uh, guarantee that I'm going to look at everyone's stuff. I, I what I do to other 14-day challenges applies to you as well. You can look at other 14-day challengers that I applied, and you can apply the same corrections as you move on. Um, the, you completing it doesn't mean I will look at it. It means I might look at it. And if I don't have time, I don't have time. <clears throat> um, okay, let's see other questions. When the light is bright, there is sharper separation between light and shadow. Bright means sharp. I really thought she was more of a nature warden, some sort of fawn-like creature. The shadows on the nose made her look more beast-like. Um, I, I, I wouldn't, I, the shadows on her nose are just what I'm responding to the light with. Uh, maybe they could be a bit more blurry because they're further away than the ones on the eyes. That's definite. Um, so I could blur them out and make them a bit more smudgy. That's like as much as I do. You can defuse them by all means, but you have to have the right environment in. You can make this even more bright. You have to have a complete um, setup or else it's not going to work. Did you go to any art school or self-taught? Best regards from Sweden. I'm self-taught. Tart. I'm <laughs> self-taught. <laughs> I did not go to an art school. Um, any other question? <laughs> Beautiful. Sun icon equals knife. Exactly. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one. Just never put the portrait ahead of the light environment, okay? Write that back. Never put the portrait ahead of the light environment. That means that if you're... Um, like putting that portrait and making sure everything else is adjusted just so the portrait can be visible and you chose a really really friendly low high diffuse low cast shadow length light environment but you decided on a forest scene that forest scene came first and then your character you don't change the light on the forest so your character looks good that's bad that's bad framing it looks cheap it looks like you have multiple light sources in there it's bad studio work it looks like a cheap backdrop it doesn't look like an open room what I did to it makes it look like an actual forest scene where the face doesn't matter whether or not you got studio Hollywood lighting on you it doesn't matter the forest comes first the moon comes first the bounce light comes first the spell and the glowy thing on your head comes first um, and then you know you do okay so for this one um, Good job. <laughs> Thank you. We're writing it back. You guys are the best. Um, so this one here, okay. I'm going to really quickly just cover this up. And I'm going to do a little bit of a Google search. Okay. So let's do a Google search. All right. Nathan Drake. All right. So what does Nathan Drake look like? All right, so it looks like this, like this. He's got this kind of body type, kind of doing his thing. Okay, let us look at Dr. Giro. I forgot how to spell his name. Images, right? Very athletic-ish body type, but neckline, not really there. The same as it is with Nathan. Okay, um, let's look at um, Santa from Rise of the Guardians. 
Where is he? There he is. All right, athletic but old. But take a look. Wide. Athletic, old, wide. Athletic, old, skinny. You're looking at wizard. But you still can't have athletic, old, skinny on Nathan because it's just going to look like Nathan Drake with a beard, with a, with a fake stick-on beard. That's kind of what you did over here. Kind of looks like a really nice dude, right? Besides, if he was using a laser on his um, pipe, that laser would be toast right now. So what you did here, he's too high above the shoulder line. His ears and his neck, if it wasn't for the beard, we'd see them. So you need to, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, oh my gosh. All right. So you need to widen the dude. Holy Jesus. <laughs> Wrong painting. I had another thing on my clipboard. Shrink the dude. Widen the dude. Okay, you can separate his head, enlarge the head, and lower the head a little bit lower. And then what I will do is move him to filter, and oh, kiss kiss see. Yes, yes, many beers he has had in his life, many a beer. <laughs> Everyone got scared too. Hey, look at the belt. It's going to droop a little bit because he is very pudgy. But also pretty athletic. His muscles can stay right there. I go to the gym, guys. <laughs> I've seen old men that have massive muscles, but God help them. No matter what they do, their bellies are still old man bellies. Nature just said, okay, listen, you can't be a grandpa if you don't have a pudge. It just doesn't work like that. Okay, I'm going to just lower that a little bit. I'm going to droop his nose a little lower. And I'm just going to droop his shoulders a little lower. All right. Tuck that up. It's kind of just sitting up. Okay. So, before, it doesn't look right. He's too tall, he's too nice looking, and he looks very young. He looks like he's not, he doesn't have any of the old features. Yeah, okay, Istabrak, I've seen men who look just like this. You have, but games and movies have set tropes you can't fiddle around with. If you fiddle around, you're going to get a funny looking thing. If you wanted him to be a tall, lanky old man, you had to really push it. It had to be a tall beard, and he has, he, his gesture would have to be a forward-leaning gesture for the old man to look like an old man. Look, let's sketch one together. Maybe I can pull this off right now. Okay, so the gesture for an old man, I'm just going to use my regular brush. Okay, so I'd start off like that. I'd make sure I have the beard, I have this. It's kind of like a wizard leaning forward, but he's a tall old man. So he's got very tall features. I'm just going to keep, sorry, I'm so zoomed in. What the fuck am I doing? I'm just going to keep that there. Okay, so this would be the starting gesture. I might even push his head to be forward even more. And these would be just the starting shapes. I would give myself some gestures here and there for the nose, how I want it to look. Okay, for a short old man, yes, they can have a straight back. But they have to have that belly, and that's why they're pushing their, their, their back so straight. All right, and then we've got the nose. And for a, a, a very strong old man, you can have less of a belly, but you still have to have old man. Old man means the neckline is not under the head, but on the side of the head. That's how you sketch. That's how you create characters. That's how you create believable tropes. When you're talking about an Olympic kind of, uh, character, the neck underneath, you got that large shoulder line, and then you've got the triangular shape going down. For an old man, you can go ahead and have that triangular shape, but the neck connects from the side. So you just have a lower kind of jar head look. You've got a little bit more width. So he looks like a very tough old guy, but he's still an old guy. How do you show age between characters in character design for games and movies? 
this is how. All right? The slightest little thing changes everything. Same with an old woman. You can have an old woman just like that, or you can have a young woman just like that. This is the only distinction between these two gesture lines. I don't know why I made them have a beak, sorry. Right, look at the difference between the two. Look at how, many, how much volume we're speaking and difference we're speaking between the two. So what you had before, it just didn't seem like the head was connected at the side. Now it feels a little bit more like it. I would lower it even further. Okay? And I would kind of, you know, make his laser a little bit lighter. Maybe a little bit thinner. Okay, so this is what I mean by that little characterization. At this point, it's not really light source or light environment like we had before affecting characterization before the light environment didn't reflect the character or the, or the, or the, um, the design of the character or that evil kind of undertone of the, of the horned creature in the, sh in, the, in, the, in the dark forest, girl or not, it wasn't a glamour shot. Here, the body is not reflecting the character type. Okay, so the th common theme is characterization, um, which I can continue here, I guess. The chin is too strong because the lips are too high. The chin being very strong means that we're looking more of like a Joan of Arc character than we are a... And I understand that there is a lot of Joan of Arc theme, kind of like independent woman when it comes to Belle, but she's still considered a princess. She's still very delicate, very beautiful. She's called Belle. So you know you're working with a, um, like a, a trope. So you want to just... Put the chin where it belongs, put the lip where it belongs, and then I will show you what needs to be done with the lips. Connect the chin back up. That chin was very strong. Lowering the lips is counterintuitive, but it's exactly where the mouth should have been, not the lips. The lips needed more volume to them. So I'm going to use the bloat tool, because they look like male lips. Don't want to make it look like she got lip injections, though. I don't know what the hell those are. Fucking freaky alien. Shit. Okay. The lip corners might need some adjustment, but the nose. The lips could go a little bit higher, but that would make the chin look large again, so I'm just going to move the lips and the chin. Actually, I'm going to move the whole thing. There we go. Just a slight little change, and I'll show you the before and after. That's kind of what was holding us back. It wasn't really feeling like a complete uh, portrait. It looked more like a um, tomboy. There are other reasons why she looks like a tomboy, and that's good for this character. It's good, because it's, you know, Belle who likes to read. See how long, large that was? More like a, what's his name? That talk show host with the massive chin? David Leno? Jared Leno? I don't know. A very, very strong chin. Now, other reasons why she might look like a tomboy. Her name is Belle. She likes to read, but she's very, very pretty. So gorgeous, in fact, that Gaston um, thinks just because she is as beautiful as he um, is entitled to her. So you can, because this is a story, okay? We all know our, our princess stories. Come on, girls. <laughs> it sounds really hot, though. Okay, so I'm thinning out the neck and the eyebrows. Not so much, you know, this questionable, like this questioning expression, but just enough that she just has an arc to her brows. She doesn't have a straight, boyish eyebrow. It's just... Trust me, it's, it's not princess. Princesses have flawless eyebrows. She's still her. She's still this adorable, sweet reader. I'm going to raise her inner eyebrows to be a little bit higher, but now she has an arc. It's not so much as an inquisitive expression. Okay, so you see the thick neck, and then the after. And then I'm just going to... The teeth kind of... Uh, I still have some issues with them. I'm 
the lower lip also needs a bloat. And pull down. Um, I critique, what? Do I critique my sub's art? What do you mean? Subscribers art? Um, subscribers are people who join the community. So I love the expression. I love what you did. I feel like you should create more of a distinction between her and the background. She kind of seems to be melting in with the background. You also have a very romantic era kind of um, lighting setup where not there's no shadows. So before, after. It's the teeth. I think it's the teeth. I think it's the space you provided between all the teeth. It's too strong. Sometimes all you need is a simple indication of the presence of the tooth. You don't need to draw the space between every tooth because she will look like she smokes. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. I want it more than I can tell. Who wants to finish the rest? <laughs> yeah, they were uncanny because they had a little bit of a space in between them. See before, too much definition. Then you had, um, she's barely smiling and her mouth is filling her whole face. So what I would do is just tuck that in just a little bit. And you see how strong um, her uh, this jowl area is another reason why she looks like a tomboy. <laughs> I'll stop singing. I'll stop. <laughs> I'm gonna also kind of thin this out a little bit. <clears throat> and for once, <laughs> crap. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, no, everyone's singing now. <laughs> okay, before, after. Seems a little bit more balanced now. There are a couple more issues with the shoulder and the neck. Um, but this is definitely a good place to start. Be careful with this. It's starting to, again, read as more manly kind of features. Just make sure you have less of that hairline reading as a sideburn. Yes, she does need some cash out of. She has one on her nose that's pretty strong, but other than that, there's really nothing there. I'm going to complete the rest of the uh, Cupid's bow. And then before, see how manly it read with that chin size? And after. And I feel like her face after the corrections is too short. So now we have to do an enlargement of the face for the head because right now the face is taking up a small amount of the head. Sh so as, as, as one collective movement, we're enlarging her face. I think that was it. I, Eureka. Before, after, and then complete before, after. Still the same girl, still the same pleasant face, still the same uh, sweet squint in the face. I think you captured this character very well, um, but now a little bit less uh, uncanniness and gender confusion. Okay, just making a nice edge in between the collar and her chin. I hope this helped you. Well, this in the characterization in this case for your notes would be making sure you have the right features per character. She's a princess. At the end of the day, she's still a princess, okay? Now, just stretching off that same theme of femininity, you have a very masculine face, very masculine nose size, but you have, you're going for like that succubi kind of, succubus, whatever, 
Uh, you got a very strong chin shape, not a circular dome-like female head shape, dome at the top. You don't have the traditional, which you should, it's not a choice. It's, it's tropes, you use them or you don't, you don't, you don't get hired, it's simple. Um, yeah, the dome for the head, sorry. Um, then we've got the thickness of that neck, dude. Okay, no matter what kind of body type she has, no matter how athletic she is, she's female athletic. She's not male athletic. Because then she'd just be a hermaphrodite. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's either you have male or female body, and if you're deliberately androgynous, uh, go to Tumblr. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. If you're having a character, if you're designing a character that is androgynous, they'll tell you. They'll let you know, hey, it's neither male nor female. Please make sure that happens. So you have to start off with a starting gender. Was it first male or female? If it started male, you start giving it a male body type, but female features. So female, very feminine face, but male body type. That might be a bit skinny or scrawny. So there's always a deliberate kind of system behind confusing genders like this, but it's not difficult to figure out when to use which because there are very serious tropes in place. So just for the face alone, okay, symmetry was off, the nose was huge, Shit, the jaw was, I mean, the neck was huge. I mean, is it supposed to be a hermaphrodite? I mean, it is a demon. Okay, so just for the face. Also, the whole light environment is... Do I want to do this? I have to go to the gym. <laughs> let me do it. Let me do it. Okay, so I'm going to darken pretty much everything. All right, I'm going to darken, 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 darken. What I am going to do is delete along the light underneath her. All right, just look at that. Just look at that instantly. It's instant. So sorry. Very passionate about light, okay? okay? So she's got these lights here, and they're about to reveal everything on her face. So we've got these dudes kind of just hanging out here and here, revealing these, these, and these. Why do you guys ignore the, the environment from which your object emerged? Why? What happened? Is it some sort of vendetta you have against light environments? It makes no sense. So what could it possibly be? I wonder. I'm also going to apply the color to this area. Actually, I'm going to take the light source color itself and just throw it on anything that is illuminated by these yellows. Light throws its color and its magnitude. All right, so before, after. Yeah, it's dark, but too bad for you. You already started off so dark. It's so light. All right, you need to have a better idea of where you're going with these light environments and these full-on illustrations you're trying with. This isn't, this isn't a walk in the park. This is the big business. This is, I mean, I love the design you did. She's so creepy. This is where it's at. This is illustration. If you're not ready for the kind of responsibility expected um, out of you with your light environment, you shouldn't be trying illustrations. Alright, so that's step one. So we got, we got, we took care of that. The light environment might still be right behind. Because, um, the room is bright. She's dark because she's being, she's denying the light. Um, then you've got these dudes which are facing the light. And this dude. But this dude is not really facing the light and neither is this dude. So, doesn't even have to be that dark, just anything that responds to that lava underneath her. And then that yellow, and then finally I'm going to raise the light environment to be a little darker, 
choose some of that exact yellow and throw it on anything that is getting light because again light throws its color as well as its magnitude uh, you kind of get a little fuzzy around here I'm not sure why you do if it's pin up then uh, that, that has nothing to do with light source pin up doesn't mean you throw out all the fundamentals pin up means that it's just the theme the costume and all of that and if it's pin up it's traditional looking 40s style beauty um, really that's what it's pulling from it doesn't have to be 40s 50s um, or even modern but it still has to be a typical Barbie doll face or at least work from it the nose can be smaller than usual or longer than usual before after okay and if you have any extra lights I don't know what these are but I'm just gonna work with them if you have any extra lights nearby to reveal her face, set those up first and then move on to reveal her face. Okay. So you got some of that. You got the nose shadows on the side. You got some, like, kind of this rippled horn texture. Um, apart from this, I really don't know how, what else to work with. And the characterization here is that she's a perfectly proportioned demon succubus, wife of Hades, gone... I don't know. <laughs> Just evil. And where you were before, both in light environment and in characterization, I really recommend you take like a four month break from anything like this ever again at least four months and work on portraits work on the 14 day challenge it was just 14 portraits learn the kind of face you want to pull from every time you design a character do some character designs and do some form studies i know that's all boring but it gets the job done you can't wait for the next masterpiece to perfect the issues you dealt with today that we discovered for you today you have to take them on one by one. Yes, it's boring, but it's the backdrop stuff. It doesn't have to be fun. It's not expected to be fun. But it means you got you took care of it all. None of it is personal work. None of it. None of it. <laughs> uh, before, after. And just because the light environment has now dimmed the room doesn't mean we can't go bonkers with whatever is illuminated. We can, we can go crazy. We can do this and we can do that. I mean, it looks even better when we exaggerate it. We can, we can do whatever we want as long as we respect it that all the direction sourced from beneath her. Okay? Also, the light is on the bottom half of the painting, not the top half. So the top half needs to be just so much darker. I'm going to darken and then we erase away at stuff that is glowing or stuff that is revealing anything. So that means... We erase this away, we erase this away, and anything that those two are revealing. It's cool if she's a little bit more mysterious, is it not? I'm just deleting upward. Isn't it more cool like this? She's more mysterious. And hey, guess what? It's a good time to show off her evil eyes. Okay. So, I'm just going to exaggerate them. We have a nice little sliver of light, sliver of contrast among a shadowed area. That means that we have the necessary amount of focal point and shrinking of the brush and edge work to um, pull off the necessary amount of focal point for the portrait. Get it? It's a mouthful. Okay, so her mouth is now, uh, her eyes are now part of the focal point, are doing their own thing, which is okay. <clears throat> so before, what happened here? You want to know what happened? Masterpiece is too soon. Alright, get in, get in the front of the class, Tommy. You know what to do. <laughs> and after we kind of just fix her face a little bit, and we set up a light environment that's a bit more accurate. 
the less you show, the better it looks. Doesn't that piss you off? Don't you want to learn any other tricks like that? Don't you want to be there for when the next time the less you show, the better it looks happens? You're not going to know when, when that opportunity is going to happen next until you plan your painting or, or, or do some studies. I mean, I can say keep doing this till you get better. You know how long that'll take you? That'll take you years, bro. You need, to, you need to start doing studies now so it'll only take you months. So between this painting and next year, this will be your after next year. This will be your before next year. And even better than what I did. <clears throat> you have an amazing eye for design. There's this fleshy kind of burning on the, on the thing and she kind of doesn't care or whatever. It's really cool. You could have added some more dungeon-y type of lights. Could have been like a card. She could have had um, a bit more light on the chains. You had a lot of detail there that you could have shown off. This is just really topical light environment setup. Right? So, um, any questions? Well, thank you. Isarak, I have an instant face palm with your changes on my old man. Thank you so much. You're the best. You're very, very welcome, Daniel Dagwa. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I need success, they're too expensive. <laughs> oh, right. I need success. <laughs> That's how he said it. They're too expensive. This poor princess needs some cash out of it. Okay, I really read all that. Um, any questions? Uh, yeah, she's probably walking on it, but the fact that the rocks around look so big and she is spreading her wings, the space just looks too small. Meh. That's a trivial detail. Alright, let's see what we have next. Oh, we're done. Yay! Um, so, that's it for today. Uh, what are some of the bullet points we, sh we, we, uh, we, we worked on today? So we have this piece, we've got this. What are some of the, the main lessons we've learned on, we've learned today that we've covered? Any, any thoughts? <clears throat> are, the, are the artists present today? What have you learned? If you control E, you merge the later you're in together with the layer directly under it. Layer. Oh. <clears throat> I thought they were saying success. Me too. I need success. Because <laughs> she was so miserable. She needed success in life. <laughs> so that she could <laughs> support her family. My child mind didn't bother to ask, why the hell are they writing success in the lyrics? I just went with it. I rationalized it. I need success. <laughs> Okay, so light environment, glowy things, characterization, gender and age, success is too expensive, <laughs> old man have pudge, uh, character tropes, light sources, don't put the portrait before the light environment, excellent, match the character body types to the tropes, note takers, this is a gold mine, when do you think the portrait sale, uh, studio sale will be on? <laughs> um, either mid this month or end of this month. Don't forget your environment. It's crazy that uh, what even fixing the lighting did for this. Yeah. Light environment first, character later. Think like an illustrator and plan. Excellent, Craig. Light carries magnitude and color. The light source trumps everything. Excellent, Akun. Um, go into the woods at night and find beautiful demon lady. <laughs> uh, too many glowy things compete with each other. Exactly. Tropes are how you get hired. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, light source before portrait, therefore plan carefully. Use features to characterize, respect the light environment, and plan painting. Thanks for the help. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you, Amanda. You're very welcome, David Harris. Strong light carries a sharper contrast. Light environment comes first before the portrait. Too many glowing objects compete with each other. Pay attention to character tropes. Excellent job. For good note takers, the month of February is done, so I will be handing out some brush brush sets soon. For those who hand who hand in excellent brush, um, for those who hand in excellent notes, I will be giving you brush sets, the complete brush set. So I want to see some good notes from the past uh, critique hours for February, including today, if you want to include today. 
um, feel free. <clears throat> so go to esterback.com to join. Click on the Google Plus icon to join the community. To post your class notes, make sure you're posting them to the class notes category. The Portrait Studio sale will either be this, uh, um, like this, uh, next, next weekend on the 17th or the weekend on the 31st. Um, please don't buy Portrait Studio until then. It'll be probably like half the price. If you want to buy it now, let's go ahead. Um, and uh, that's it, I think. Um, and Patreon. If you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, you may do so. Um, I have you, um, I have uh, the, uh, what are they called? The, uh, the assignments for the uh, apprentices. <laughs> God, so many A words. The assignment for the apprentices on porch, I mean, on Patreon have already come out this month. Um, so it's going to be a really, really exciting environment challenge. Um, so if you're interested in joining as an apprentice, you may. It's a good alternative for private tutoring. But if you want to just join as a watcher and help support the community, there's watcher, there's pupil, there's initiate, and then there's the apprentice. So many different tiers for you to choose from if you're interested in supporting. I have a goal of a thousand patrons. Um, so I don't know when that will be, uh, that, that will happen, but I'm sure it'll one day. And, um, and yeah, you can help us reach that. So thank you everyone for watching. I will let you guys go. Remember note takers, please post your notes. I will contact you if you are a note winner, if you win the brushes. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Bye.